Hello, welcome back to the Flurry Sports Podcast. And if anything sounds different, it's a Sunday episode. So we are past the early slate of games. We are pretty much done with the second slate of games. So if we say anything about Sunday Night Football, just know we definitely predicted it if it was correct. And if it was wrong, what are you going to do? Like, we can't tell the future. But there's a lot of things that have happened this week. We'll talk about some football, I'm sure. But really, I don't know how much there is to take away, except for we talked about it a little bit last week, I think. There's a throwback quarterback every single week that's popping off. We said this week was going to be Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston balled out, beat the Baltimore Ravens. So now next week, maybe Tannehill has to sign with the team and win. I think the Jets play on Thursday night football. Maybe Rodgers is a little too banged up, and that's our Tyrod game. That's possible. Um, Otherwise, I'm not sure what other quarterback. Stafford doesn't really count, I don't think, but he also popped off this week. He was great. But it's interesting that, weirdly, once he hit past 35, like let's let's get these guys back in the game. I mean, it could be Flacco again, to be honest, because Anthony Richardson stinks. That's true. That's true. Well, uh, freaking coach. Uh, oh man, starting off, I not remember the guy's name. This stinks. Um, the old coach. coach of the Steelers. Oh, uh, how cower, cower. I got cower. there. All right, I was gonna say cowler, cower. Yeah, <laughs> Colin Cowherd. Uh, no, <laughs> Coach Cower. Uh, he called out on the post game show. If I were that coach, I would put Flacco back in. You're in the playoff hunt. Go win. Like, I don't know. Malik Willis gets it done for the pack. No, I mean, yeah, I I hate that. I don't know if I hate it. I feel like the most consensus take I've heard from the early NFL season is, boy, you need a backup quarterback, and that's so boring. <laughs> it is so boring. You know, whoever has the best backup. You're only as strong as your weakest link, and teams are finding that out. It's like whenever, because you've never been wrong on this, but it's my favorite counter kind of in in my head anyway, whatever you're like. I mean, I can tell you which teams are good because their O-lines are just the most developed. And I'm like, stop (laughs) telling me to eat my vegetables. I know. (laughs) It's not exciting, but it's like, I don't know why Uh, teams continue to be like, you know, we could sign three all-pro offensive linemen. (laughs) Or we could sign a wide receiver who complains if they don't get the ball. Jarvis Landry. Yeah, that too. Like, let's just get some linemen in here. It Actually, you know what? Let's start the show with this. Let's start the show with this. Because it's related to linemen. It's related to quarterbacks. And it's going to surprise you. It's going to surprise everybody. And I'm very brave for saying this into a microphone on the internet. (laughs) I wanted to say that too. I'm a Tua guy. Oh no! What he won me over. Uh, We talked about it on the Wednesday show. That press conference where the reporters were grilling him, like, "So you're coming back to play football? Why are you playing football?" He's like, "Yeah, I I like football." And then it's like, "Are you going to wear a guardian cap?" And the look of disgust in his face (laughs) of, "Am I going to wear a guardian cap?" That fully won me over. Like, fuck yeah! Why am I wearing a guardian cap? It looks dumb. It's so it's so stupid. Um, they did lose. Um, Tua will get hurt again. Yeah. Um, it's not because of the guardian cap, but he will get hurt again, and it's because of the offensive line. Said this preseason. Um, but as long as Tua doesn't make fun of offensive linemen again, I think I'm a Tua guy. I love I love his fit showing up to work, just casual. Yeah. I, he's a football guy. He's a football guy. Of course, I love Tua. I've always loved Tua. What do you What do you mean? Uh, one, his opinion on Lyman definitely hasn't changed. There's no way. <laughs> if I've learned one thing about Tua this week, he's not someone who changes his mind very easily. <laughs> I'd like to think he did, though. But you're right, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, that and I listen. I do agree. He won me over a little bit. Of like, why would my on this particular stance? I understand and somewhat liked his abrasiveness to like. My I was cleared. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna play. Like, I don't think that's on him at all at all. We talked about that when it happened. I was like, if no. they let him play, that's his choice. I here's the one thing I don't like, and it is to the guardian helmet thing. Mm-hmm. I I hate that we're out because it's lumpy. 
<laughs> it looks stupid. Man, I and, and I don't I don't, care. I don't I, like who there's some there's some powerful people with money into this fucking Guardians cap thing. For sure. Because we have helmets that already there's people wearing the helmets with the Guardian cap technology built underneath and it looks fine. Why is anybody wearing Guardian hats? It looks stupid. I will say the ones I've seen this year, I can't ever tell until they like tell me he's wearing a Guardian for the most part. Um, if I'm looking for it, I, I'm sure I could do it. But they're not Jake, standing out to me until they happen. I'm, I'm sure with this... you, but I want to agree with you first. I do want to agree with you first. Okay. This okay. is the part I want to agree with you on. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, the NFL does not want them to figure out how to make these look better. I agree. For sure. Yes. <laughs> for sure. There's no world where the NFL wants them to be like, we can have this seamlessly in there and preventing concussions because then the NFL will have to admit, well, then it's our fault. So, mm-hmm. no, yep. please leave it up to player choice and make it look dumb. Like, yep. make safety. The, the, the NFL loved – that's the only part I didn't like. That's the best way to word it. I just know you know who else loved that conference? Roger Goodell. <laughs> Roger Goodell was like, yes, safety is stupid. Don't wear the It helmet. is dumb. Yeah. The, I'm not sure if this happened to you, but the equivalent of a guardian cap to me is you go and watch Pee Wee football and there's that one kid with a bright blue helmet because their head's yeah. too big. Like, that's the guardian helmet. Like, oh, there's the nerd. <laughs> like, this is the kid <laughs> who should be on the field for one reason or another. Well, the only thing I had, I can't remember if I've ever told the story of the show, but I know we've talked about this before, which is Pee Wee football by us. There was a weight limit on how big you could be when you touch the ball. So if you were yeah. over, I believe it was 200 um, as a small Something, child, yeah. they put a red stripe on your helmet or 150 or whatever it was. So like mm-hmm. if you touched the ball, the play was dead because you're going to kill somebody. Well, I signed yeah. up late because that year I'd break in my arm. So the only helmet they had left <laughs> that designated that was an all red helmet. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's badass. Right. <laughs> it was like, not only this <laughs> really kid, don't let this kid touch the this football. kid can't go near it. That was my favorite. The one play coach got mad at me. There was a fumble and we didn't recover it because I touched it. <laughs> it was Sorry, a loose coach. fumble on the ground. I touched it. They're like, play's dead. <laughs> Team that's so stupid. That's not the refs. That's dumb. Let the kid recover a fumble. That is really dumb. It's also John Yang was pissed because one time he he had a clear pick six. No one in front of him. Uh, Touched it. Plays dead. That's so dumb. That's right. Sorry, the kids. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Let the kid hit somebody. (laughs) It's fine. It's football. I like, I don't know, man. Could you imagine? Mike Allstott as a kid learning he can't run people over. He Can would be nobody now. Doing that in women's sports? That too. <laughs> that is that's an interesting equivalent. Don't let don't let that Olympic boxer touch the other one. That's illegal. <laughs> no, I know. I it's dumb. It's dumb all the way around. I'm glad to have won you over a little bit. I will say before we get off of the backup quarterbacks coming in. I have a little sour taste in my mouth on it because of who I thought we were getting for a second. I was reading okay. the news briefings too fast. So when I saw that uh, uh, Dalton was out and they needed mm-hmm. a backup in Carolina, I was so thrilled to see they signed Jake Plummer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jack <That'd> be incredible. <laughs> Jake the Snake's got one more in him. I literally was texting a message to you like this is <laughs> – this is the greatest day in NFL history. So good. <laughs> How old is he? <laughs> like 50. I love Jake Plummer, though. Holy shit. So he could not old. hit the broadside of a barn with a clear pocket. But if he gets on the move, he is the most accurate quarterback yeah. of all time. <laughs> no relation i did that digging already but oh, that's really? well that's, that's how come i didn't send it to you because before i sent it i was like let me see if uh um because i was starting to figure out that it was like oh jake not jack maybe it's his kid no no relation just some just fan <laughs> i hope so the plumber yeah. clan i hope they're cousins or something but in any case i was a little down because everyone was like oh did you see Jameis Winston? I thought we were about to see old man Plummer back on the field. God, that would have been incredible. Instead, we get Bryce Young, who came out five for five, scored a touchdown. Everyone's like, 
you know what? Bryce figured it out. As of right now, they're down 28 to seven start of the fourth quarter. So Bryce is still Bryce and the Panthers are still the Panthers. So that's good to see there. Um, but there is, I mean, it's not really fair though, Jake, because they ran into a buzzsaw and a buzzsaw that's fueled by Uncrustables. Uh, that's the Denver Broncos. That's what we found out this week. Uh, there was a survey of the number of Uncrustables eaten in every NFL building and the Broncos more than doubled second place. They consume 700 Uncrustables every single week, according to what new source? That was People incorrect. Magazine. People Magazine added a zero to every number. Yeah, People Magazine didn't carry, didn't put the decimal in the right spot. I don't know what they did. They said they consumed 7,000, and the next yeah. closest was 3,200. Everyone was times 10 uh, because they are just as excited as I was that they were talking about Uncrustables, maybe. But 700, so 100 a day, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. And I think what we want to do here, that's funny. Everyone's talking about that. We're not the first one to say this. Yeah. But we are known for this. Sh There's going to be a lot of new people listening to this show because of recent fantasy stuff. I just did an AMA on Reddit for the wow. 3 million uh, follower thing, uh, subreddit there. So there's going to be a lot of new people listening to this. For those people, we're known for deep, uh, deep dives, hard hitting analysis. We do investigative research here. And it's just one of the most accurate uh, analytical shows of all time. So what we want to do today is figure out who is the Bronco consuming most of these Uncrustables. Um, isn't that right, Jake? That's right. Um, here's basically the thing. There is no way, because here's the part I like. I You're making a joke about it. I will say, I'm not, there's never been a detail I have not sweated. <laughs> It's my least favorite <laughs> metaphor. I'm sweating every yeah. detail. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that they more than doubled every other team, there is it is either Sean Payton <laughs> yeah. or there's someone in the locker room. That's the only thing I'll say. I can't wait for the report that says, where did the Saints rank? Because if it followed right. him, awesome. Does he have a Smuckers deal? All things I want to know. Or, There's been multiple videos of Sean Payton hitting the bong when he didn't have a job. So maybe he gained, uh, you know, a, a liking to Uncrustables during that time as well. Or is Bo, Bo Nix fucking snacking away? Well, it is a year ago, so it wouldn't have been Bo Nix. Would not have been Bo Nix. Oh, okay. been that Russ. So. I was thinking, tell me this guy doesn't eat Uncrustables. He's a rookie, so I guess I'm wrong. But Frank Crum? Offensive tackle. Frank Crumb fucking loves Uncrustables. Are you kidding me? That's all he eats. Frank Crumb loves an Uncrustable. Uh, ironically, less crumbs. Exactly. No crumbs, no crust. That's Frank Crumb football right there. Um, so I should look at the Broncos 2023 roster then. Correct. you saying. Broncos yeah, because if it was roster. four season, by the way, the total for the league is speculated to be over 8,000. It's just crazy. So what you're saying, which is also kind of funny, we'll see how the Steelers rank this year. Do you think Russell Wilson was just collecting a paycheck and housing on Crustables? Because that's possible well, too. I will say, let's before we go into the specific names, I was mm -hmm. thinking of positions of like, what positions do I want to start? I think O-line is a big muncher. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. the big boys. I think similarly mm -hmm. D-line, but a little less. Sure. I was sure. thinking, who was Denver's backup quarterback? Because oh. you're just sitting there, you're munching them down, you just got to eat. Jarrett Stedman? <laughs> oh, Stidham. Jarrett Stidham? Yeah, Jarrett Stidham loved Maybe. it Uncrustable. He did love it Uncrustable. I can guarantee that. Um, one guy, I'm not sure if you know him. He's from Whitewater. A uh, lot of, he's a fan favorite, great football player, has the half shirt all the time, offensive lineman. Quinn Miners, I think Quinn mm -hmm. Miners definitely. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind he eats ten of them a day. Like he has to. He loves them. Will Lutz with one L, motherfucker, Lutz. <laughs> kicker. <Yeah. laughs> loves sure. an uncrustable. He's had one every day his whole life. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Um, who's the other... biggest culprit? I there are. Do you think Will talk... Jordan Humphrey does? Will Jordan. <sighs> Listen, we love this guy. Cortland Sutton, Cornbread Sutton, loves the Cornbread Uncrustable. Sutton. Sure he does. <laughs> he absolutely does. That is very true. I think some sneaky wide receivers in there. I was like, they just, 
no position group has a grosser diet than the wide receivers. That's why I'm saying Lil Jordan Humphrey might be the guy. Yeah. Jordan he, Humphrey, he, Jerry Judy doesn't turn one down. No, no shot. Um, With a name like Greg Dolchich, he's got to love an uncrustable. Yeah. Lucas Kroll. <laughs> Kroll. Um, Lucas Kroll. That is true. Tyler Lancaster. He's a former Packer. Uh, D lineman. That dude is the whitest man I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like he is like, he's not even fat. He's just got the whitest shoulders I've ever seen. So uh, he, he is certainly a possibility there. Um, I'm looking to, there's no way I would love if it's this guy. Does Pat Sertan just mm. pound on crustables? He, I mean, he's one of those people where you couldn't tell him not to grab another one. Like, especially for how the bad the Broncos were last year. Like, are you going to tell Pat that he can't have another Uncrustable? He's the only one fucking playing football out there. He's doing That's everything. That's so true. That's so true. He's just pissed at the world, munching them down. I, I think he could be one because he's a locker room leader. Some of these locker room leaders got to be leading the way on this. Do you think the Broncos knew – they were counting like they were keeping track and they're like, let's set the all time record. Let's go for it this year, boys. Who cares about our record? Like our actual win loss. We just need to make news with this. I just, yeah. How did they leave everyone else in the dust? That's what I'm saying. Like they're built different in Denver. Something's happening. Wider, (laughs) wider paint. Manning's always in that building for some reason. Still could be Peyton. Here's my question. You know, who who follows Peyton everywhere? Eli. Eli. Eli's eating these. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is all uh, freaking Elway. The Elway, too. The box just munching them uh-huh. down. Um, listen, like you said, one a, one a day on average per week uh, for the Broncos, 700 each week. They're eating a hundred a week, not one. Oh, you're right. Bad amount. Well, hundred a day. Hundred seven hundred people. <laughs> that was yeah. what math I was doing. Um, but yes, so you're so right. A hundred a day. Fuck me up. So during their <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. <laughs> so many. I'm trying to do the math of like, do you think this is what I want to know? Obviously, it's almost hinted at that like most of these, I think it even said in the article that most teams reported many of these were halftime snacks. Yes, I yeah, I knew I know Travis Kelsey has a liken to a, a halftime crustable. But even if you know <laughs> the entire 52 man roster eats an uncrustable, great. One. Yeah, that then you hit the <laughs> mark. That or that's a hundred for that day. That's it. And that'd be if they ate two, you know, they eat two at halftime. Boom. Where are their yeah. other Uncrustables? Um, where are they storing these Uncrustables? Where are they storing them? Do you think they're all the same flavor? See, there's no way. There's no way. So we got multiple flavors on Uncrustables. We got grape. We got uh, strawberry. We got honey. There's a Nutella one. And they just released a raspberry one, which I can only assume is going to lead to an uptick of Uncrustables consumed in that Broncos building. To me, I don't know about across the board, but Cornbread Sutton is a grape boy. Cornbread Sutton is eating grape. You know that. He's not fucking around with strawberry. No shot. I think in the NFL locker room, there's a chance a lot of these are the hazelnut spread. Really, really, I, that that breaks. I think my there's heart a protein too. push a little bit, and it's it's the better, it's the better version of the peanut butter one. And by the way, I saw I saw a thing where they proved this. That hazelnut spread is just fucking. Uh, what's its nuts? I can't remember Chocolate? the name of the hazelnut spread. Now. Nutella. No, what's? Thank you. Um, I literally almost said not Nutella. No, nope, it's Nutella. Um. Like they tested, it's the same exact recipe. They just can't call it that. So I think the linemen wash down a grape with a Nutella. Hmm. <laughs> they wash it's it their, down. It's their dessert. Palate cleanser. 
Because to your point, I just went to a poll of the most often bought Uncrustables and most okay. popular is grape and peanut butter combo. Second mm-hmm. most popular is strawberry and peanut butter combo. Yeah. Then it's hazelnut. Then it's reduced sugar, grape and really? strawberry. Which they maybe didn't even have those in Wisconsin. They say fuck <laughs> that. They sneak that in the NFL. Peanut butter and honey spread. That got mm-hmm. mentioned in the article. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. I mean, Jesus you know it goes well Christ. with cornbread, uh, honey. Uncrustables makes ham and cheddar bites and turkey and Kobe Jack bites. Of course they do. They need to. There's been too big of a demand for it. I don't know about that. I don't know if I've ever wanted that in my life. Um, that's crazy. Sorry, I just saw the people article again where they get all the numbers wrong. They eat yeah. over what are they 80, doing? Thousand on crustables a year. It sounds incredible because <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's <laughs> eighty thousand. Like no, that's wrong. How has that not been redacted? That's like change it. Figure figure it out. Do the math again. That is, it's over 2,500 Uncrustables a team. <laughs> the season's not very long. No. Divided by, by, all right, how many weeks in an NFL season? 19 in the regular season or 18? 18. 18, yeah. All right. Are we counting, out. are we counting playoff Uncrustables or are we just counting regular season here? I'm just going to do regular season for the, because they said over the length of the season, I'm assuming that's when the okay. bowl went over. So yeah. they did divided by 18. Yeah, it's over 138 Uncrustables a week. For every team? For every team. And there's teams that aren't participating, what we have found out from the poll. They only mentioned 24. Is the 80,000 number right and they got the other ones wrong? No. No. No way. They wouldn't do that. Let me, okay, so. Now we're looking at. Someone reported this wrong, and now we've got to get to the bottom of this. 80,000 divided by 18 divided by 24 is 185 per week. Oh, by the way, <laughs> sorry, I got to stop you right there. Uh, the Athletic wrote an article a couple years ago about the NFL secret halftime snack, orange slices. Teams are required to provide three dozen sliced oranges for halftime for the visiting team. You're required to? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So if the Broncos, are we saying the Broncos consume over 12,000? Okay. The 80,000, the 80,000 number is right. That's so. Yeah. So everybody the, else is wrong? No, they, they, they did it halfway. They just didn't add them up. The 700 total, the 300 totals for second place for Seattle and Jacksonville. Correct. But. That all adds up to eighty thousand. So they they accidentally added the zero to the weekly totals, but gotcha. um, yeah, gotcha. Um, gotcha. Yeah, they're not consuming seven thousand per week. That's wrong. No, Denver Broncos are consuming seven hundred per week last year. Seattle yeah. three twenty, Jacksonville three fifteen, Miami three hundred, and then rounding out the top five is Atlanta. Atlanta two fifty. Um. And like you said, there are some teams left off the list. So I feel like we should end talking about the teams who are, are not in the Uncrustable game. But, That's true. Uh, I, I noticed Packers for sure. I do want to highlight, now that we've broken that down, the NFL okay. goes through around 4,000 Uncrustables a week as a league. That's, I mean, that's good. That, that That's about, that's what it should be. I that think. Was right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if you were to break that down, that average, this is crazy. So if we do that math, this, you promised it, you're here, folks. If you're like, I'm a fantasy football fan, fuck you. Welcome to the show, I guess. We're yeah, not this is what about the it. show is. Yeah. No, I love it. You love numbers. We love numbers. Like this number, that average yeah. across the board should be 125. Should be. Gotcha. 700. <laughs> For the Broncos. It, they are outperforming the, what they're what they're supposed to be. That that's incredible. That's an incredible display of effort, uh, perseverance. Uh <laughs> that's incredible. There's no doubt that there's no I mean, people are surprised that the Broncos are playing well this year now after 
a foundation built on peanut butter and most importantly, no crust was laid last year. That's that's winning football. Sean Payton football. Yeah, 20 of the NFL's teams eat less than that average amount. And the note at the bottom of the graphic, which is also interesting, so it's not necessarily eight other teams do not participate. It is eight other teams did not provide their own data for it. So okay. I like to think Packers were Lions, ashamed at how many young crustables they well, were eating. Well, the Detroit Lions are like, we this is our winning formula. They're getting they're 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 figuring it out. We can't let them know. Lions have to be at like twelve hundred per week. They're eating nothing but. By the way, uh, I need uh, shout out the athletic. We we like to go through their articles sometimes on the show. They yeah. in their article do a brief history of uh, the Uncrustables, and right. <laughs> here I need to read this paragraph. The project appealed to Len, who you know Len Crutchman, uh, ooh former wide receiver, uh, uh-huh. for North Dakota State, helped invent the Smuckers. Uh, Len's business instinct, a simple idea with a complex logistical problem to solve. They started in their kitchen with a loaf of bread, one jar of peanut butter, one jar of jelly, and a few drinks. <laughs> Why am okay. I not surprised that they were drinking? Yeah, yeah, have to. An idea this good. You can't come up with it sober. How about this one? Box. The first decision they made was, that this is fucking awesome. Oh, entrepreneurs are the dumbest people in the world. And I mean that with all the love of my heart. The first decision they made was that the sandwich should be round. The moon is round. The sun is round. The earth is round. It's our favorite shape. Do we have to go to a committee and survey people on what the shape should be? No, it's round. We've got that nailed down. Okay. Now that we got that nailed down, now let's figure out the rest. <laughs> it's awesome. And by the way, if you're out there wondering, like, why haven't I started a business? You don't have that level of step one done. Yeah. Yeah. You got to think big picture because there's other Uncrustables knockoffs out there and they're all square. So that tells me they patented that it has to be circle as well, Correct. by the way. That's yep. awesome. They patented that. I'm sure they patented the, the sealed edges um panned a bunch of that shit i just love like if i was making a sandwich like that i would have agonized over the shape and they looked up and like look at the moon <laughs> well they're drunk as hell looking outside like <laughs> we got it we got we're, we're sitting on a gold mine here we just got to figure out how to do this and they're all staring at the moon like we got it by 100%. the way to give them credit this is not a problem i knew needed solving no no, they let you know this is a problem that needs solving. That's that's the best kind of product. I didn't realize how shitty my life was. Thank you. I know. Uh, that's true. See you need filthy. But I, to give shout outs to the eight teams who did not report. Yep. Uh, here they are. Okay, so by process yeah. of elimination, we're going to go through division by division. Starting, of course, we've mentioned a couple of them already. Um, the Packers and the Lions, not mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, with every team I mention, I want you to say so. Lions, uh, Lions, Packers, do you feel like they uh, are ashamed to report or do not really participate? I think the Lions are always looking for a competitive edge, whether there's one there or not. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, David Montgomery threw a touchdown pass this week. Did he have to? Absolutely not. But let's break out this trick play in a game that we're up by 40 points. That's a, that's Dan Campbell football. So they are for sure looking for a competitive edge. Packers are just lips are sealed on everything. Packers are feel like they're better than everybody. And for whatever reason, all of their information, they try to keep private except for their financials, which have to be public because there's no <laughs> owner. So, <laughs> This is what we have to do. Let's leave a little reminder. When the 2024 budget comes out, let's take a look. And if there might be a little Uncrustables budget in there. And we'll ha- we'll go back and figure it out. There might Never be a know. little Uncrustable in there. Wedged in. Mm-hmm. Yep. We've mm-hmm. all done that before. Left one in the car. Comes out. We've been, brick. We've been, there. We've been there. By the way, best school lunch. Soup and sandwich. They gave us Uncrustables. Fucking so banger. good. So fucking good. Back then, Uncrustables were bigger, too. We don't need to get into that situation in the back in my day. But Uncrustables used to be even better than what they are now. That's why they go through 700. 
Um, all right, Zach. Next, Eagles. Eagles, okay. Eagles. Eagles do kind of seem like they would be ashamed about it. Like, we can't let them know that our favorite sandwich is not a Philly cheesesteak. It's actually an Uncrustables. That, that's a Sirianni. Sirianni's housing them for sure, but he doesn't want anybody to know about it. Uh, unsurprisingly, 49ers did not share this information. That's yeah, that's that's the same thing as the Lions, I feel like. There's they they will never let people know. they don't Tom answer never any reporter know. phone calls. <laughs> I'm sure no. they got a call from the athletic and they were like, fuck you, see you later. You'll never know when John Lynch is there. He'll never pick up the phone. You'll never see him when you're running across the middle for a route. John Lynch is there. He'll hit you, but he's not going to let you know about it. The Jets are another one. I know they're not on the list. Jets are not on the list. That's incompetence. They just, they wanted to let everyone know they didn't meet the deadline. Oh, I guarantee you, Salah didn't want them eating Uncrustables. That was like his health kick. (laughs) That's where he lost the locker room. That is, that is. That's why he was fired. Like, Woody, we got to do something about this. This guy is rooting our halftime. Halftime adjustments are for Uncrustables, not for orange slices that Salah hands out to each of us in a little Dixie cup. Uh, Nerd. (laughs) Nerd indeed. Um, I think we found, by the way, the division that did not participate the most. Three of the AFC East teams did not participate. Oh, so Patriots, Patriots, not surprised. That's still Bill Belichick. Soft. He's not fucking letting you know. <laughs> yeah, correct. Uh, yeah. They're not telling you anything. And along with them, neither did the uh, Bills. Uh, Bills. The Bills did not report either. Bills is interesting. I feel like Bills would eat a Bills lot of are Josh ashamed. Allen would eat a lot of them. Bills they are ashamed. probably ashamed. They don't want people to know how many they're going through. Mm-hmm. That's probably true. That was a crucial part of DeVar Hamlin's recovery. <laughs> for sure his helmet's just lined with uncrustable so he doesn't die from a concussion <laughs> um next is so now you've caught up to me a little bit so i'm doing math in real time but i believe the texans are not on here and nope. i could see miko not allowing them to eat that yeah for sure and by the way the players would follow directions they wouldn't eat that <laughs> <That's> <laughs> i'm joke. not sta- i'm no not problem. standing up to, to miko it's fine Correct. And then lastly, because there should be only one team left, and I think we can all – no, never mind. The Chiefs did report. I was like, those fuckers didn't report, did they? Uh, they did report. The Broncos obviously reported. The Raiders reported. Oh, actually, that was our last team. We are all the way through. So okay. that completes our list of eight. Uh, so a few divisions, everyone participated. Uh, mm-hmm. The only division – Truly, we maybe we just discovered which division is least trusting of the press, too. Uh, the AFC yeah. East feels right there. Yeah, that's that's fair. The I, AFC I East and the it. NFC North being like, mm, no questions, also feels correct. Yeah, it does. It does. And so what division? I mean, AFC West consumes the most just because the Broncos are leading the charge. Yes, I would say the divisions that consume the most are uh the AFC uh yeah the AFC West is up there so is the NFC North or sorry the AFC North cuz Steelers are up there like the, Baltimore is up there mm-hmm. yeah you're um, right Brown so there. all of theirs are a high they all reported they're all in there a little bit so i think that would raise theirs up and then otherwise um I, I think maybe the category they lead overall in the league of the NFC South is pretty stacked across the board. True. They all decided yeah. to report this. I'm I hope this is a yearly thing. I hope this goes out with the report cards that they some do of those NFC year. South teams are just thrilled someone called them. True. <laughs> you want to interview me? <laughs> of course, of course. What time? You want to know what the Saints are up to? Thought you'd never <laughs> ask. <laughs> I will say, so here's a funny study, okay? So the Saints were the bottom of the teams that reported. They only eat 50 a week. Yes. So that's obviously one dude. Correct. Yes. Yeah, that's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. Yeah, correct. That's one guy. That distance. So here's the real question. 
is Sean Payne the problem or is he disgusted with what's <laughs> happening? Because you a 650 a week difference is something he has to have an opinion yeah. on. For sure. Yeah, something's <laughs> happened. It's not like he didn't notice. <laughs> is it just me or there are Uncrustables everywhere I turn? God, their fingers are so sticky from the jelly. It's just, you know what? <laughs> I think there's one thing we for sure know, probably. No one in the Denver building has a peanut allergy. No. Because <laughs> if there's no. one person that comes in for a tryout, they're dead. Like, if it, if it's airborne, they have no shot. The city of Denver is right. contaminated at this point. <laughs> We do. We know that for sure. Um, I can't wait. I need this study this year to do a year by year analysis. I need to see coaching impacts. I need I, to see. I was, I was wondering why this came up, and I guess it just popped into my mind. Is this all stemming from the 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 Giants offseason hard knocks with Shane eating Uncrustables, or did Uncrustables buy in for this for the one of the most insane marketing campaigns in the history of business ever for this year? Because they made, like, we, I just watched One Tree Hill, right? There's a season where Sunkist decided to sponsor the season of One Tree Hill. And it was in every fucking scene. It was awesome. <laughs> it did Smuckers be like, we want to get in on this new Taylor Swift NFL. And we are going to throw whatever amount of money you want at it. It's like when WWE was doing the anonymous GM. So they'd have celebrity yeah. GMs come in. Best one, by the way, being Bob Barker. Rip. That episode rock. <laughs> but uh, one yeah. of them was the network was also promoting the Muppets. So they were the GM for a week. And it's one of my favorite Cena things he's ever done because he just like part of his character is that apparently he hates Piggy. Like he was like, I can't, you know, I can't <laughs> yeah. talk with her, but they act like they have a history, which is funny. Anyway, is uh, I will say, I don't know if this is going to make you like or dislike this report more. Um, I, a part of this is they had some of this info ready to go because they mentioned their previous article. This stems from an athletic article as all things seem to nowadays, but um, uh, yeah. they wrote one previously on uh, how many orange slices, as I mentioned, but in sure. that, Many players said if they had a choice, their favorite halftime snack or other one was on Crustables. So, but what prompted that re entry was Brock Purdy ate one in his locker before the Super Bowl while answering press questions. This, yeah, it does. This does leave a weird, sour taste in my mouth. Why does it have to come back to Brock Purdy, the most uninteresting man in the NFL? <laughs> I don't know. By the way, he definitely eats the honey one. Um, but yeah, sure. <laughs> they have to order them special for him. But they he they, says they, the jelly's too tangy. He doesn't like it. There's that, and I did know this, which is they cite it right away. It's the second sentence of the article, citing Andy Reid famously at one point, because I think it was during his hard knocks, uh, used to offer them up as rewards for drills. I like that. I like that. That's a, that's a two uncrustable play right there. That's great. That's good coaching. You I gotta incentivize these about, players. Like frisbees. Oh, for sure. <laughs> How did throws. Coach Tron yeah. ever do that? No kidding. I mean, Coach Tron bought me a two liter of Coke that he left in his truck for me because I made. I'm not sure. This happened multiple times. It either was because of a play I made in a game or because I won a bet for something that would happen. Probably the bet. <laughs> Probably the bet. We had some, well, I don't know. Coach Peterson would have done that too. I've said this on the show before, but he bought us a bag of cookies that we ate instead of going through conditioning with the rest of the track and field team. Offensive line, uh, we did, we had a damn good game. I, it was something, I think it's, I mean, if, if you want that to talk about maybe. You, by the way, I'm not going to let you sneak past. We had a damn good game. You're well, I mean, over. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I think, uh, brought this about was uh we ran a, a, a cross what, my favorite play of all time we ran a cross screen so uh austin delong shout out yeah uh, was the x out there and he would take one step come down the line of scrimmage me at right guard i'd get to go out and hit an unsuspecting cornerback right in the temple and make him out for the game <laughs> that was the play and then he would catch the screen and go for a touchdown uh ran it it's only scored touchdowns should have ran it more um 
but we got to come in the next week and watch film in the morning in the weight room and got chocolate milk and donuts. That's that was that's a big deal. That was huge. That's a big deal. I will say, as long as we're talking about it, I, I, we had to run. It's the only play I feel like I've ever been good at running. And it's just because I was so fucking tall. We would run in JV games. We stole it from Boyceville because they did all the time with their small fucking nose guards. They'd be so mm-hmm. tiny. They'd love to run the play. They'd have a, a, a five, three, you know? So instead they would drop and bring a linebacker in on the blitz and they would drop the nose guard into pass coverage to sure. still run yep. their zone. So we used yep. to run it in practice against the team and <laughs> coach Mac, that was the week he happened. Like someone was sick or whatever. So he had to coach JB and he knows it's scout team. I was good at it. Cause I'm just fucking so tall. So it's just yeah. in the middle of the field. The quarterback's like, I can't throw a slant route. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That tall fat kids in the middle of the field can't throw around them. So we ran into the game. I knocked down three passes. It's the proudest I've ever been. I'm like, can I always do this? And he's like, no, I'm not having you play middle linebacker. But the you know the play works good. I mean, this is something that's been brought up multiple times by at least me. In the Dunn St. Croix, teams only run slants. That's the only pass pattern there is. So if we just drop somebody back there, we're going to pick it off. <laughs> It was so good because I could see the people coming on slant rounds. I'm like, I know you got to come to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just to gonna you. stand here. You're you're gonna throw it because the window's here. <laughs> the window is here. Um, I think this is as good a segue as any. Are we ready to transition out of Smucker's talk? I suppose so. This show was not brought brought to you by Smucker's, but if Smucker's wants oh, to talk, I'll be. talk. <laughs> it should be, to be honest. Yeah, we could get you to that. We can rival the Denver Broncos number (laughs) ourselves. I can guarantee it. Let us try. Uh, We've never been built for a sponsor more than Smuckers. (laughs) No kidding. Maybe Nestle. Smuckers sponsor the 20,000 subscriber stream that we will do, and we will go through all 700 on stream. We will not leave. The stream will not end until we get through 700. I'd love to do, if we can incorporate a Smuckers taste test, I'm in on that. Oh, fuck yeah. We will even try the ham and cheese one. <laughs> the monstrosity. Uh, I've got a couple of quick things. I think we'll land in the baseball realm, but I wanted to get there for a sec by, I, I always love to cover stories that come out of the Mountain West, as you know. And mm-hmm. I want to know if you'd seen anything that happened with uh, the reprimanding of the Wyoming coach for remarks he made against the officials. No. Uh, well, he had a hell of a game. They lost 25, 27, which, Mm -hmm. you know, just a grueling game in which he received a personal foul for yelling at the officials, uh, about a pass interference call. I moved him in that helped him set up the game winning field goal after the game. Zach, I need to know, is this the best insult that a coach could throw out there? And do we need to hear more coaches? Like, this is my, if a coach never says this word. I don't know if they've got that cut in them. You know, I don't know if they're made to do this. Because he said afterwards he had a big paragraph about, you know, there's a lot of stuff we could do better, which I like. He started inward. (laughs) He was like, there's a lot of ways we call the game. But it's not just us, right? He's like, right now, if you asked me, I'd say I'm a a horseshit coach, and we've had some horseshit officiating out there. Um, Mm -hmm. And if anyone says it's not horseshit, they're horseshitting themselves. That's the quote. It's out there. He got to use okay. that word four times. Uh, yeah. Mountain West came That's out great. and said, we do not support the profanity-laden speech. He coaches the Cowboys. There's going to be horse shit around when there's Cowboys. Let the man. He took it. He took accountability first. And yeah. then he said, I need to be better. But let's not, let's not beat around the bush here. A lot of horse shit happening. And I'm going to be the one to point it out. Also, you've never been around a ball coach because there are two options. That call was good or it was horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, if you ever see the lip readings, it's like a baseball. Everyone now says, let's fucking go. Like if you read yeah. lips, that will be what they're saying. If you read the lips of a football coach after a flag, they do not agree with. If they don't say mm-hmm. that's horseshit, I'm out on them. Yeah. Even, even if they say bullshit, that's enough for me to raise an eyebrow. Yeah. Like this guy's. This guy is, doesn't have it. He's almost there. He could get there, but at this current moment, he does not have it. 
He does not have the goal to coach a team like this. It, it just made me realize that it's like, that is like, I what I wanted to do super quick is which NFL head coaches pass the horseshit test. Mm. Like who okay. uses that? We're playing like horseshit out there. Uh, you know, who could you see saying that I Belichick for sure. Like, I think he's a classic example. Uh, he says a lot. Yes. He says it a lot. Um, Mike Tomlin famously has said it. Um, yeah. so that's good. I, I think there's a, a, a few specters we could go on, but does anyone jump out of like, that's a big, for sure. That- I, I know Mike McCarthy's a big horse shit guy. Yeah. I think it's his most redeeming quality. Honestly, yeah, that and he was a boxer in Pittsburgh. Mike, bring that up a little more. Like that's incredible. Sure. Um, I think he is. I, I I'm a little iffy on one of them, but I think both of the Harbaugh's are Jim. Maybe not, but in my mind, because he does swear. He's a yeah. very buttoned up guy, but on the on the football field when his cleats are on and the khakis are there, yeah, he'll he'll let it fly for sure. And it's only after his secret fifth temple vein appears. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> He's already true. turned as red as a tomato. He builds to a horse shit. Yes. <laughs> yes, he does. It's not, it doesn't come out the gate. It has John to, it has leads to with it. Ah, oh, that's horse shit and you know yeah. it. Yeah. Also sure. the best follow up ever to an official. And you <laughs> know it. And you know it. <laughs> they, what are they going to say? No, I don't. I don't yeah. know it. And we all know it. It's my favorite thing you only hear a if, coach say. If they say, no, I don't, then that that's the green light for me to let you know about it then. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Dan Campbell, obviously. Oh, yeah. Come on. Dan Campbell for sure. I think Stefanski might have, have, have it in him. Dable, to be honest. absolutely. Dable for sure. Um, Does D'Amico? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. That is an interesting one. Is he too pumped up for that? OJ Mayo loves some horse shit. I always do that. Fucking hell. Jared Mayo. Mayo. (laughs) OJ Mayo. OJ Mayo needs to get on the sideline. Now that we see what JJ Reddick could do out there. That's true. OJ Mayo is the the natural progression here. Get him out there. Um, Let him coach the... Indiana Fever. They just fired their head coach. Yeah, that's crazy. OJ Mayo is the man for the job. Six WNBA teams are making coaching changes, by the way. Um, Big deal. Good move. Um, not. Gotcha. Um, no, I, th- I think that there. But, Zach, anything Oh, Doug, here- Doug Peterson's a horseshit coach, for sure. Yeah, I, I didn't know if we were going to bring up Doug E.P. For sure. Yeah. He's for sure a horseshit coach. Oh, Andy Reid, obviously. He's one for sure has to build, though, as well. Andy yeah. Reid, Andy Reid's the strong oh. silent type. He will just stare at the ref at first. Nick and just Sirianni breathes. Oh, he he says it so much you can't really take it seriously. He called the fan horseshit Eagles fans, yeah. horseshit yeah. fans, yeah, horseshit players. Yeah, I think sure. his daughter said it when she came out to the press conference. I, you know what word? Because McVay used this word earlier in the mm. week. I think he's a horseshit coach. He called Puka Nakua a war daddy, and that's the best. <laughs> so that's one for people who don't know. War daddy, one step above dog. This guy's a dog, but war daddy, this guy's going to battle. And that's what Puka Nakua was. He's correct. That doesn't way, get thrown around to everybody. That's a I selective few. I don't know if you saw this this week. I almost wanted to make it a whole like video, but I, I was like, I'm not going to put this much effort into this, but... I was I I always turned uh, Sports Center on the morning, and they got that Get Up show that comes on. So Rex is on there, which I love. Yep, yep. He, someone tried to use the phrase, you know, uh, I don't know about that. It's like putting a hat on a hat, you know. Someone, <laughs> someone yeah. tried to be like, God, oh, that's a little much. They didn't need to do it that far. Rex was so befuddled by <laughs> the phrase "hat on a hat," not yeah. meaning. Like you got to line up everybody out there. Yeah. Like we got to put a hat on a hat. Like they were Me like, too, actually a little yeah, bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like when you hear them both in context, great. You hear it out of context. It's one thing, but it was, of course it was Dan Orlovsky being like, no, nah, it's wow. a little bit putting a hat on a hat. And Rex is like, I thought their line was pretty good. <laughs> like it was like, he couldn't, <laughs> yeah. he couldn't follow it. <laughs> I was like, I need to follow the linguistics of NFL head coaches. 
<laughs> Honestly, that is that's an interesting project. And if so, if there's enough interest in this, I think I'm willing to take on this big a project. It would be fun to write a full book of like <laughs> that's like, a crazy like, jump. Okay, I know, like gathering different coach speak throughout the years. It's mm-hmm. it's like. You know, I, I have a book, Abraham Lincoln quote book. Great book. Yeah. But you could also have just coach quotes, coach speak quotes. Mm-hmm. And that would be that would be incredible. You could break it down by what it kind of means. You know <laughs> what I mean? Or like context, maybe. Yeah. Like it would be that would be fun. That'd be a good I think people would buy that. I think so too. I think it's very fun. I think that could be a fun video essay if you'd rather do that. I could see that doing well mm. on YouTube. That too, I suppose. If you didn't I, want to write, I, if there's if there's a publisher though, listening, watching, call me. Up. I I have plenty of ideas for books. It's putting pen to paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we can get ghostwriter, if there's ghostwriters listening, that's great too. <laughs> Drake, <laughs> Drake, yeah, for sure, for sure. Are you out um, there? For sure, there might, Drake might have been in my Reddit AMA yesterday. There's some Drake quotes getting thrown at me. And all I had to respond with was O V Ho. I had to. What do we do? <laughs> That's right. You listen to the show. You know yeah. what we're on. Yeah. Um, that's good. Okay, so you had you had more, correct? After I that? do, I do have more. And here's my big question, Zach. I have two random things that have come out in the APA news bracket. APA News is my favorite website to go on and see what random okay. beat reporter is out there this week. Which of these random baseball things? Do you find more interesting? Okay. Okay. Is it that <laughs> both are Yankees related? Uh, that so, you know, bad time for this because they're down too well. But maybe mm-hmm. these will spread some cheer, which is A, option A being Clark Schmidt, who's gonna start game three of the World Series. He's one, he's been one of the Yankees' better pitchers this year, although he's he's younger, still developing, transitioning out the bullpen, but it's been really good. But part of that transition, Zach, is also the involvement of his dad in the team as his dad has been a former military man. He's been a professional pilot for a long time. So he's okay. flown the team in several trips. He is now <laughs> the team's official pilot for family charters during the World Series. So he's flying the okay. rest of the families from L.A. to New York and mm-hmm. different things. So I have some thoughts on that, but that's one of the options is that uh, – one of the players' dads gets to fly the team plane. Um, yeah, weird. Weird. Okay. Other one, it coming out that uh, Aaron Boone, manager of the Yankees, uh, someone spotted that we mentioned in one of the interviews he does with John Boy that he's a watch enthusiast. And he's like, oh, people might be able to notice. I, I like to wear a bunch of different watches. Well, someone did the math, Zach. Not only does he wear a lot of watches, he has 15 to 20 watches. He has a, a deal with a watch brand. So he has 15 to 20 watches he wears regularly, most of which are associated specifically with a pitcher playing that day. So he has a different color band and a different color watch that he will associate with a pitcher. It's like, it's uh, it's Garrett Cole today, so I'm going to get out my blue band Rolex or whatever brand. God. It's his day. Yeah. If they're doing bad, he will switch out their official watch. In game? In or game. No. He said he has switched through as many as five watches in a game before because sometimes we'll have specific watches for specific relief pitchers. But also, he might be like, you know, this watch, he said he won't abandon a watch for a guy in game. So if Garrett Cole's not doing good, that watch stays. But afterwards, he might be like, Garrett needs to switch up. So I'm going to switch the watch I use for Garrett Cole appearances. Baseball. <laughs> Don't bring baseball into this. Baseball Don't- managers are the most. They, they do nothing. If he doesn't show up to the World Series Game 3, nobody will know. No one's going to be like, oh, where's Boone's watch? What watch has Boone got on today? Like, that's his, that's the only cool thing he's got to do? Fuck it. I hate the sport, man. I hope he does it so he remembers who's pitching. Could you imagine if... if okay, Let's... Okay, so Salah is still with the Jets. Aaron Rodgers throws two interceptions. They lose. Could you imagine Salah going up? Be like, oh, did you actually see my watch? And it's, it's I'm going to switch it because Aaron did bad. Next week, it'll be a different watch. Like, could you imagine that? It would be criticized to no end. What a stupid thing. 
Mike McCarthy I, got criticized because all he did was manage the game plan. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is what baseball managers kind of do. Maybe it's in their name. Sometimes I don't know do. if the game goes right, they make the overall decisions. Listen, if the game's going right, their decisions are easy. They've got to make some high stress decisions. Here's the thing is I've learned this through the years because I not a soccer football fan enthusiast. It's very similar to that. A lot of international sports are more similar to the baseball model versus like, yeah. it just so happens. Hockey is somewhat similar. Line management is a little different, but I mean, line management's pretty similar to the relief pitching concept. It's just yep. more guys. So, I mean, basket football is really the only one that's that intensely involved. Best sport. <laughs> that's true best sport and that's why yeah and ba- basketball is a little bit more it's, assistant it's coaches the second and head coach, most a hundred percent um at least in basketball there are also plays correct i mean, I mean <sighs> they'll say there's plays in soccer i disagree <laughs> Hockey, same seen- thing by the way Yeah, I've seen three seasons of Ted Lasso. I'm Jack. There's a fourth coming, but I've seen enough soccer to know there's not actual plays being run. It's a three-man weave. We learned that in fifth grade basketball. That's a warm-up. Soccer's running warm-ups as plays. I mean, the NFL's running warm-ups as their kickoffs now, too, though. So, (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't know if I'm out on the NFL kick returns. Oh, I'm fully. I mean, what's worse? There's nothing worse than the onside kick thing. The actual kickoffs, I don't like. I don't know if there's one person who's even a little bit on board with the onside kick. It makes no sense. Why do I have to tell them that I'm going to do an onside kick? Why? And why is it only fourth quarter? It's so dumb. It's the stupidest thing. Also, here's the thing. Can we just tell the officials? No. <laughs> You'll tell the official. The official will rat on you to the other team. Like it. I know, but, so I, dumb. I, but we should make that the rule. Like, because I know the whole thing be. is you can't do an onside because, well, we have this rule in play that it's got to go so far, whatever. Um, so the onside won't cover that. But they should well, just. It, it's because of the alignment, because the alignment's completely different now. Yeah, they should get rid of it. Listen, it's dumb. It's dumb. They don't know what to do with it. It's all dumb. They're making bad decisions. It's kind it's, of funny to watch. It's kind of funny. It just bums me out. Let's it's it's not Give it interesting. Time. Give it time. No. no one's running Starburst out there. <laughs> well, first off, if we want to keep this kickoff, make the penalty worse. Like yeah. if you're if we're booting it out of the end zone, it shouldn't come out to the thirty. It should be the thirty-five. I love Let's the announcers, that. by the way, being flabbergasted. So many teams are still kicking it out the back of the end zone. Yeah, because nothing's changed, except no. it just looks worse. Yes. Uh, no, the penalty should be worse. Uh, also, I do think some of it is like the kickers need time to adjust. Um, they didn't practice this. Uh, no Justin word. Tucker added five to 10 pounds of muscle on, he said, for this. By the way, I can tell, Justin. Yeah, great. Where? Yeah. I don't I don't know where. What no, I, didn't mean, oh, I didn't mean visually. I can't tell that he's gotten thicker. I can just tell that he's a little worse this year. That, I mean, that's true. Yeah. Lock it in, man. I, I added five tens of muscle. It's all to my kicking leg. This makes no sense because could you so it's going to have to trickle down if this is what it's going to be, right? So if we're saying in a perfect world everyone loves it. College is going to adopt it then and then high school is going to adopt it and this doesn't work for high school. No. At all. It just doesn't work. So I don't I don't I don't know what the plan is. I don't get it. This was not a plan. Uh, this was created the same way Smuckers were, which is they had oh, a jar of peanut great. butter, some drinks. Smuckers had it. They they figured it out. They figured out the goal, which was make something that's a circle. They looked and, uh, at the sky. They looked at the sky. 
they said, God, I hate crust on sandwiches. And they figured it out. What do you, so this is fair, which is I think the NFL needs to figure out if they like kickoffs. <sighs> Some people, the non-football people hate kickoffs. The football people love kickoffs. That's the issue. Can I say, here's, I don't want this to come across that like I'm anti, I, I, I made the guardian camp argument earlier so i don't want to be anti a thing they did to keep nfl players safer Mm -hmm. kickoffs weren't the fucking problem (laughs) no but they framed it as it was that was the kickoffs were the scapegoat somehow correct that's the part that's stupid right like it's like don't worry everyone the nfl is safe now damar hamlin was (laughs) not playing special teams in that moment no no like Kickoffs weren't a big deal. And by the way, one way to fix this bullshit kickoff, which also is bad, add wedges back. The only reason we didn't have wedges before was the high impact, and now there is no high impact, so bring wedges back. They can't bring back wedges in this format because it be too it it would be unstoppable. I know, which is fun, but <laughs> I would love a season where the wedge the wedge like changes the landscape of the NFL. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be great. I I dream of a day where the wedge could come back and change the NFL and lead the NFL. I've got here's all you need to do to make the NFL kickoffs more fun. You want not a lot of action in the return. Wedges are mandatory. Mm-hmm. From the start mm-hmm. of the play, hook them. <laughs> you have to run backwards <laughs> together. Yeah. And by the way, if the kicker makes the tackle, you get the ball back. I think I like that. Yeah, do you risk it all in the kicker tackle? I like it. I think there are things to do. I think let's stop pretending like anyone cared enough about the kickoffs in the first place. I will say here's the only thing I care about. I I hate touchbacks. Make them I hate touchbacks. It. But here's the thing. Here's one of the most sad thoughts I've had this football season, and it still truly haunts me. Mm. I will never ever see a surprise onside kick in the NFL again. Ever. Still next season. That rule won't stay. It better not. But I don't know. There's no way you can bring back onsides with the alignment because it has to be within 10 yards. If they're, they're that far away from the kicker, that they're going to do, that the kicker can just kick it 10 yards and go recover it himself. Like there's no way it can come back. This format's not going to, it didn't do anything they wanted it to. Maybe you're Gosh. right. Maybe you're right. I want them to try and do onsides with this current format. 20 yard onsides. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. It's just if it's bad. Bill Belichick is having a year off to figure this out specifically. He should be tasked with all of the NFL's problems this year. Figure it out, and then you can pick which job you would like. Pick one. You want the Chiefs? We'll fire Andy. It's fine. Just fix football, Bill, please. What did you think of him calling the Patriots soft, by the way? Bill did it. Gerard Mayo did. Mm, it's true, but Bill's, he agreed. Bill's, Bill's, no, Bill said they're not soft. Mm. Bill said, I know all of those guys. Those guys are not soft. So Jared Gerard Mayo is the only one who about. said it. Yeah. OJ, OJ Mayo is the one who threw him under the bus. Fuck OJ Mayo, dude. Okay, well, I don't know how I feel about any any backlash to that beyond like fine <laughs> like I, I don't know there's a lot of weird criticism over it and i'm just like they're a bad that's team like, man they're a bad team that's the worst thing you could say to players i know but, i know but now no one can criticize it because they just beat the jets Got so it, fired up. the only thing he can say now is well look at that it worked that's true <laughs> like we we beat the Jets. Was it that? Was it not that? We got we rid of all that horse shit. That's right. A lot of horse shit. Got it out. Left it in London where it should be, by the way. <laughs> where it should be. Anything way, else Ted, you want to talk about? Ted Lasso season three, best season. It is. How do you? We never talked about this on the show. How do you feel about season four coming? I can't wait. Claire and I did just. I've never been more excited because we just did a rewatch. Claire had never made it through season three because she heard mixed things. I'm like, no, it's definitely worth, it gets better. Yeah. It sits. So 
Um, I'm pumped about season three. I here's what I hope they don't. I I hope they know uh, going into it, and maybe this is too much to ask. I hope they know going into it whether it's the last season or not. Hard to right. It's hard to because that would be the only fair criticism that really sticks with me for season three is I can tell they were both trying to set up for a season four and mm-hmm. wrap everything up in a bow. Yeah. Cause now that I, I know there's a season four, I don't feel as bad about doing all of that development with Jamie and Roy to, sure. to do the final episode where now they're literally fist fighting each other. And they kind of yeah. play that for laughs. It's a funny scene, but it's like, it was so out of the blue, but I, it was literally just a nod of the cap to we're going to do this again. Season four. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Zava's a whole arc <laughs> that doesn't do anything. I think in terms of them as like a show creation, they get to do whatever they would like to do. I think. Yeah. Like if they have ideas for past the season, they will be given the green light. But if, if I had to criticize Bill will. Lawrence <laughs> for one thing, <laughs> It yeah. could be not knowing when to hold them, not knowing yeah. when to fold them, you know? Um, yeah. Cause if, if there's one writer I'm worried about having a perfect finale and then possibly revisiting, uh-huh. it's Bill Lawrence. It is love bill, but boy, he screwed scrubs at the end there. And People who are not Scrubs fans won't feel this way. That is the fear I have when I hear that Jason Sudeikis may, like, maybe you know and I, I don't. But my last he- hearing was that we don't know for sure how much Ted will be in season four. I don't know. Um, that would not be surprising if he becomes a part-time character, I think. And I the think weird the part is okay. that... He, he, I mean, he, his name's on the show. How do you have a Ted Lasso without Ted Lasso in it? Well, so th- this was all speculation. Now we're firmly in Ted Lasso talk. Um, there seemed to be a hint at that in the finale of Don't Put My Name on the Book. It was never. So I think I agree. there was maybe they won't change the name for obvious reasons. But one, I think there was some straight up speculation that they call it the Richmond way. Um, uh, yeah. which maybe, maybe that is, oh my God, I've never thought of the scrubs title of this. Maybe it is Bill fully buying into the criticism he got last time of like, just call it something else. Don't call it scrubs. Just start a new show. That's a spinoff. Um, yeah. so maybe he would do that or it's season four and Ted. Cause I don't know. The part I liked is I also don't think it would be like, they kind of end I loved the ambiguous end of Ted is coaching, but I feel like they were hinting at like, that's not enough. Yeah. Um, so he could be fully part-time. I, to answer your first question, I'm pumped. It's my favorite TV show going right now. Um, I think it's, see, I, I, I wasn't so wrapped up in the ending of season three that I'm like, don't do another one. I like, agree there's a reason they didn't do any of the romance stuff in season three. None of it mm-hmm. resolved the way you wanted it to. And it's because they wanted to do that in future seasons. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I don't feel like season four is set up to be the last season though. Like they just won Correct. the league. Like, I feel like if they're doing, I hope they come back knowing they're going to do two more. It feels like they would. Yeah, to your point, they kind of need a setup season before they do something bigger. Yeah. Um, so I don't we know. Need a, <sighs> we need another beard centered episode for sure. We do not. <laughs> I, uh, I will say, though, I think the beard centered, the, the type of episode that was like the beard episode of season three is now my favorite episode in the whole show, which is uh, Amsterdam. Yeah. Where Ted yeah. has the barbecue sauce driven yeah. <laughs> triangle scheme dream. And it's mm-hmm. where Roy learns how to ride a bike. <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite for grandpa. It's just a fever dream of an episode. It's so good. It's the best. The rest of the team can't figure out what to do. So they never leave the lobby. Mm-hmm. Rebecca meets that Dutch guy. 
Oh, yeah. That's true. No, it's good. I, how are you feeling about season four? Ah, I'm excited about it. I, I have the same thoughts as you with the Bill yeah. Lawrence thing. Like, Bill. <laughs> I know. I know. Learn your lesson, old man. Figure this out. <laughs> how many times are we going to teach you this? I know. Yeah. But, yeah. I, tell me I, ahead I, of time. Bill, tell me ahead of time how much Jason Sudeikis is going to be in it. Yeah, don't disappoint me with it. Don't part-time me. If don't JD goes to other hospital be of like he's in it, but he's not like and, and then there's like a phone call from JD that they recorded episode. over the phone because yeah. Zach Braff couldn't make it to set. Like, I don't want that. No, and like it, <laughs> honestly, now that I think through it, it's so eerily similar to that. Maybe it's all gonna be a play on that, which I think and would don't do have well. another character come in to be the B version of Ted Lasso. No. Don't have some guy from Georgia. Come coach another team. So that's the part that I do feel like I'd be excited about is I'm fine with a show where I'd be fine if I I would be fine if Jason Sudeikis wasn't there. I it's better when he's on. Ted mm -hmm. is great in that way. I do think there's a good plot there of like how does this team go without him in the room? is a fun, yeah. interesting story. They've got a because I also think that fits the theme of the show super well. Of like, I think the season four theme very naturally would be you've just lost your training wheels. Right, yeah. Like, it's and one thing to afraid, develop. Yeah. Don't be afraid to kill off Nate. That's fine. We'll be on board if Nate, you can do it. Uh, yeah, Nate's character progression season three is so interesting. You're not in on him yet, huh? No. No. He's He's done. He's dead to me. I also am like, who's the antagonist? Because I feel like they fully wrote out Rupert. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think there's some there. I'm so in. Like, the show could just be Roy and Jamie, and I'm in. Like, those are my favorite pieces. They're still there. Yeah. Um, Sam could be a star, and, like, Keeley really didn't get to do much last season. Like, there's stuff they can do. That African League owner could end up being an antagonist the big antagonist yeah you're right um yeah kupu um he's crazy every time he shows up uh yes <laughs> no i think so listen i mean uh th i went into season three being like it's kind of crazy but i was like most like all right who's ted gonna end up with Sam and Rebecca, Roy and Keeley, they ditched literally all three of those things. So mm -hmm. Bill did it. Yeah. He's like, oh, this is going to happen, huh? Okay. Yeah. Not giving you any rope. Rebecca maybe ends up. That was my favorite takeaway. Everyone was like, she ends up with the pilot. Does she? Random fans? Who yeah. knows? It was the last scene. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. We have no idea. You wanted a wedding? We gave you one. It was Beard and Jane. <laughs> yeah that's right oh um, yeah that's not the one we wanted but yes we got it so i don't know i'm excited i did i loved season three as a whole thing it's very good i hope jamie's mom's in season four more she's the best yeah that's true I i'm in on more characters her. i cannot understand without subtitles <laughs> no i don't know my yeah. sweet sexy baby <laughs> <laughs> that's true we may have to start just a Ted Lasso podcast. If we get a good release date, maybe we'll do an episode by episode. Because I think that'd be good. If y'all are in on that or a stream or a sub series, we, I would love to do that. But um, mm -hmm. thank you all for listening. I I hope the show is to your liking. It makes me nervous. We got a, a bigger audience today. And I think we firmly off season this episode. I, I think it's good. I, I think this is a good... If you like this episode, you're going to like th this podcast. <laughs> you're going to love this podcast. I got great news. Yeah. Yeah. This, especially once football season's done, more of this. I, on the back burner, a burner in the back pocket, we also had our loser teams uh, that we drafted. We also <sighs> had uh, the NBA starting. We could have gone through how we're deciding to pick MVP or. We didn't really talk about the World Series. Yeah. Didn't talk about the World Series. I'm assuming Shohei is going to completely destroy the lives of more of his teammates um that, that's all i heard from the news headlines as the shohei otani way is um but yeah we talk about sports in a different way we gave you the uncrustable stuff which is the stuff you needed 
You're welcome. Much like an Uncrustable. Eat up. That's right. That's right. Eat up. Next week, more hard-hitting analysis. That's Guaranteed. Right. Okay. See you then. Goodbye.